team Allen Abbey. You might even get featured next week. From last week's episode, we had Fortnite. And here's a quick week from last week's Team Replays. Right, how's it everybody? It is 5 p.m. Right. here on the how's West Coast, 2 p.m. Hawaii time, and 8 p.m. on the East on Coast. The Coast. We are here together. Right. I am Mad Statter. This is Coast. Chatter with Statter. Thanks so much together. for hanging out. It looks like we've got Rick in the house doing our usual tech check, and we have our 1080p source. That's right, your fancy pants over here. I'm broadcasting out at 1080p, but we do have that gear, which means if Twitch is twitchy, you can downgrade your situation to make it smooth sailing for you. All right, so <clears throat> this is our May 4th broadcast. May 1st, there was a bunch to talk about. We're going to revisit a few things. I have a question from May 1st that needs to be answered. Plus, I want to revisit the topic of Lay Day. I've got a little bit more information in regards to um, May 1st being Lay Day in Hawaii. Nay, uh, but before we get into all of those details, Details, why don't we get this party started? All righty then, here we are one more time. I hope right. that everyone's early uh, May is time. doing great. I hope that we, um, everyone's oh, early you're right. May is Thanks, E-Music. I think I fixed it. I think I fixed it. Um, oops, just 
I'm going to fix it, and then I'm going to bash my mic, break stuff. But I think we got the second voice disappeared. Too many, um, too many sound uh, sources were turned on there. <sighs> Technology is not always my favorite thing, but I'm so glad I had a second set of ears telling me that I had a second set of voice. So thank you so much, eMusic, for hanging out and popping in with the whole fix yourself. Get this fixed because clearly we needed to get something fixed. And um, speaking of getting something fixed, I would like to, well, let's see here. If I can find it, I'd like to do it. I would like to revisit something that I did. Oh, here we go. I would like to revisit this particular graphic <clears throat> that I shared um, on Mayday. And everybody had some super good question about this particular graphic. And the question was... What are those countries in yellow? Because it was determined the countries in red celebrate International Workers' Day, i.e. Labor Day, on May 1st. The countries in green celebrate Labor Day on a different day. But the yellow countries, I didn't know what that was. And as it turns out, the yellow countries are a day, are countries that have a state holiday on May 1st. But it has nothing to do with Labor Day or international workers' rights. And I'm guessing, since they're also not in green, that means they don't celebrate any kind of day for Labor Day, international workers' rights, etc. So <clears throat> that is the revisitation of the topic from yesterday. No, from Sunday on May 1st. That when we were talking about all sorts of things, because May 1st is a busy, busy day. Uh, we've got Lay Day in Hawaii Nay. We've got, um, we have got the um, International Workers' Day. And then, of course, it was Zippy's birthday as well. But I think there was something else on May 1st. Gall dung it. I don't even remember. All I know is there's a lot of stuff going on on May 1st. Gall dung it. And it looks like Darlene is in the house. How you doing today, Darlene? We are going to be talking about things and stuff. I don't know what things and stuff you guys want to talk about. I am open to suggestions. I've got a couple topics on the uh, potential list. So um, why don't we get started with some of them? Uh, yeah, May the 4th. There you go. Um, that, is, um, that is exactly what we're doing today. And <clears throat> fun fact, May 1st. I believe it was May 1st, 1977, was when the very first Star Wars preview showing was done. Um, and I believe that that was in San Francisco. But May 11th, 1977, is when Star Wars did their preview showing in Honolulu. And I know that because I was there. I was only like three years old or whatever, um... Almost four, but not quite. Uh, but I was there, and I do remember. And the reason why I remember, and I know it was May 11th, was because I was with some family friends while my mom was in the hospital birthing my sister. So May 11th, definitely a day to remember in my life, and multiple reasons, one of which was Star Wars. Star Wars came into my life before my sister did, but both on the same day, and that's how that works. So, yes, it is May the 4th today, um, and I believe um, tomorrow, what is it, the Revenge of the 5th or something? So, um, yeah, so that is the little the little Star Wars thing, and yeah, I'm kind of a youngling, but you know, Rick, I mean, as yo young as I am, I'm still, I'm almost 50, man. I mean, come on, that's not exactly super young. Um, let's see here. Darlene, your son-in-law is a Star Wars super fan. He loves anything Star Wars. Yeah, so many people do. I mean, I actually, um, even though I did see the very first movie, probably I probably saw the first Star Wars before all y'all ever even had a chance to see it, actually, because I saw it before it was officially released in theaters. Um, <clears throat> it wasn't the very first viewing, but it was definitely one of the first viewings. Uh, but despite the fact that I saw that movie in the theaters... Honestly, I don't think it was a, until well after college that I could say that I had seen the three first movies, meaning the middle 
part of the saga in the scheme of things. But, you know, Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi. I'm not sure if that was the order in which they were released, but those are the three I'm talking about. I actually never saw the second two in theaters, and I only saw them in clips of, like, walking in and out of the room, um, seeing it in bits and pieces. So I figured by the time I was done with college, I'd probably seen them all, just, like, not in the order they were created at all. Um, <clears throat> so, um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, so I'm definitely not a super huge fan of Star Wars, but it has been part of my life, literally my whole life for the most part. So uh, I feel as though I do know enough about it. Yeah, Rick, it was episodes four, five, and six, but at the time, at the time, they were still episodes one, two, and three, or not episodes, but you know what I'm trying to say, right? Right, man? So, um, yeah, eMusic, you were in Hawaii for that too? Were, did you see it that day? Were we, were we in the same theater? I just remember um, my, uh, my Uncle Mark, who took us there, he was very adamant that, you know, you are, this is important. You're going to remember this. You were here for a very important blah, blah. He made it very clear that this movie wasn't just a movie, you know? Um, so, <clears throat> and I think it might have even been the first movie I ever saw in the theater now that I think about it. Hey, Ann Ware, how you doing? I'm just reminiscing. I think you've already heard this story. Just reminiscing the um, Star Wars uh, of May 11th, 1977. I haven't gotten into all the details that you got in regards to the after movie um, situation, but, uh, <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, just reminiscing about how I did get to see the, um, the, uh, the movie itself in the theater. And, um, yes, you were in the theater. Holy crumb. And he's like, wouldn't that be funny if we both saw the same showing? Um, that's, that would be flipping bizarre. Um, and yeah, Darlene, I probably know just as much as anyone else about Star Wars. Oh, I definitely don't say that, but it's so much a part of our culture. I mean, you live in it, right? It's just seeped. You're just seeped in it. And so, um, you know, you learn it by osmosis for lack of a better, lack of a better term. And, um, and let's see here. Uh, oh, Darlene, you have a daughter who's my age. So she's a youngling as well. All right. I guess you guys can call me a youngling. Fine. Fine. <laughs> so, um, Oh, I don't even know how to drink water anymore. All right, so I didn't have a lot to talk about in regards to um, to uh, Star Wars. Yeah, that's what we were just talking about. But I see that Rick got some sunshine today, which is awesome. And you know, Rick, I actually just went out to take the garbage out before I started the stream. And it was crazy warm out. I don't even, I don't know. I don't know how warm it is out, but let's find out. Um... Oh my, it's like 63 degrees out, but it was, yeah, it was, it was, it was totally warm, but, um, the, the weather has started to change now. The wind has blown and the pink snow is now falling. We're looking now <clears throat> at what remains of those beautiful flowered bushes, excuse me, beautiful flowered trees that I've been showing you for the last, I don't even know how many weeks. But slowly but surely, <clears throat> the pink blossoms are falling off the trees, and we are blessed with pink snow piling up on the driveways, the sidewalks, and the streets in the gutters. So um, I absolutely, um, I absolutely love this pink snow, the, the look of the pink snow, and I was so glad that I was able to happenstance upon a patch of it that had been not driven through and relatively undisturbed. So um, I actually turned my car around so I could get this picture. Uh, so, or a series of pictures actually. So there you go. It is pink snowing in our neck of the woods. Warm and pink snowing. And um, <clears throat> Rick, you only have 45 now and going down to 39 overnight. Well, it has been getting cold at night, but actually with, I don't know, it feels like, you know how sometimes when it's warm, it's like a, it's like, oh yeah, it's warm now, but it's going to go, when the sun goes down, you know it's going to get chilly. Like this sort of has the feeling of like, there's, 
extra warmth. There's, like when the sun goes down, it might still stay kind of warmish. Um, Obviously, we'll see, won't we? Yeah. But yeah, 63, um, 63 is what my phone says. And I'm going to just take for granted that my phone is telling me close to the truth. Right, right. Um, let's see here. Darlene says it was nice here today. Visited a garden center. Um, things are looking pretty, though. Awesome. And Darlene, you were so excited back in the day when you weren't carded anymore. And now you're never carded. <laughs> but, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I know that whenever I'm carded, I um, I mean, I, I laugh and I show them the card. Uh, <clears throat> but honestly, I think that the only time that I'm ever carded is when... Um, you know, it's a mandatory, it doesn't matter if you're coming in with gray hair and a walker, you're going to have to show your card because some places are just like that. They just check everybody's card. Um, so, uh, let's see here. Um, Hey, Glenn Paul, good to see you here. We're not watching a movie today. That is going to be Saturday, but Saturday, I'm glad you asked that question. Saturday, we're going to be watching a movie called Get Low and it's, it's a, Semi based on a true story, sort of a fable from this old town, um, <clears throat> took place, I think, in the 1920s, and um, and uh, it's about this old hermit who lives up in the mountains who decided to throw a funeral party for himself before he died, and it's got Bill Murray in it. I think it came out. I'm not going to tell you when it came out. I'm going to say maybe 2010. Um, it's not that old of a movie, but uh, I watched it. A little fast forward preview just to see if there was any naked butts in it because Twitch doesn't like it when there's naked butts. So I have to do a butt check for every movie that I play. And <clears throat> there's no naked butts. Um, and from what I saw, it looks like it might be one of the good movies. So, and oh good, you've seen this movie. Do you happen to know off the top of your head what year it was from you're reading my mind 2009 all right so 2010 not too far off 2009 is when that movie came out and so um <clears throat> excuse me get low is what we'll be watching on saturday wednesday today's wednesday right wednesday and sunday those are the days for the chat 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 so um so so far today we haven't really talked about much but pink snow and um star wars but hopefully we can rev up the chatometer and uh we'll see where things start to scatter right right and um let's see here um and and where 2009 i think i told you about it over the winter oh absolutely and this Yes, this movie was recommended by Anne Ware, A Ware 612, uh, and it was provided by the King County Library System, where I checked it out. So we have Anne to thank and uh, my library, my local library to thank for the upcoming movie this Saturday. Like I said, get low. And then I'm pretty sure ish that the movie that we're going to see after Get Low is going to be a concussion with Will Smith. And I realize, <clears throat> you know, this wasn't on purpose at all. Um, but I realized the last three weeks with Kevin Spacey and then Bill Murray and then Will Smith. <clears throat> yeah, I managed to um, pick some movies starring some eh, somewhat problematic figures these days that wasn't intentional uh i'm just literally picking these movies uh or, or having them recommended to me so um we can all point and laugh at ourselves for you know just hanging out with all the wrong people at statterbox at the cinema uh because that's what it seems like last week this week and next week are gonna be so <laughs> And no, I'm not going to change up the movies um, for the reasons of personnel. I literally, as I was saying what movies I was picking, I I, we were planning on showing, it occurred to me, it's like, wow, these names really kind of sound familiar for reasons that might not be the best. I might as well throw a Johnny Depp movie in there, right? Kidding. Actually, that was, that was inappropriate and we're not going to talk about that. But um, yeah, it's... Um, um, and where, yes, Bill Murray actually recently, apparently his activity on his most recent film 
has caused people to walk out, and I believe they had to stop filming uh, because of something that he did. I'm still not sure what it was that he did, but yeah, now Bill Murray's on the um, <clears throat> on the on the S list, as it were, and then. And then, you know, and and, 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 it do, and actually it doesn't matter to me because nobody's getting money by supporting and showing these movies. I, I'm not putting a dime in these actors' pockets, so I'm actually not too worried about it. I'm just laughing at the irony of, um, of it. And actually, Anne, I don't think, I did not get the impression that it was something to do with him keeping his hands to himself. I got the impression it was... He was just a huge jerk and like nobody, he was disrespectful. He was just a jerk is, is, is the impression I got from the, the vague skimming that I did. I don't think it was anything like inappropriate, you know, misconduct in a sexual or physical nature. It was purely just, you got yourself a bad attitude, man, and you need to get over it because you may be a big star, but ain't nobody like working with you. And so we're going to shut this movie down. I think was really what it was, Um, but no quote me. (laughs) And Cindy Krause, so good to see you. I'm so sorry it took me so long to like acknowledge your presence here, getting caught up in um, in Statterbox at the Cinema Plans and the irony of um, the actors that happen to be on uh, (laughs) on um, (laughs) on the docket. So, uh, oh no, and where? Don't worry. Take the chat off topic of Star Wars and Late Eight. Well, first off. The chat always goes off topic. I think that's the whole point. It's supposed to scatter. And so people like you throwing in random stuff for the conversation to take a veer. That is what this show is all about, my friend. And trust me, I don't got much to say about Star Wars. And you know what I have to say about Star Wars? All right, guys, I'm going to tell you what I told Anne about Star Wars. Little secret. So I was three years old when I went to see Star Wars in the theater. And um, I sat and watched the movie the whole, whole time, like a good girl. And then when we were done with the movie, I said to Uncle Mark and Auntie Janelle, who were the adults with us, I said, I have to go to the bathroom. And they looked at the bathroom line and said, it's too long. Hold it. You'll go when we get home. No. No. No, (laughs) I didn't hold it. I mean, I tried. I tried. But then the poo came and I pooed my pants. I pooed my pants. I was three. I pooed my pants. It was so embarrassing. And uh, so maybe that's why I don't really like Star Wars. (laughs) It's this negative memory of what happened after I saw it. But um, yeah, so now you guys are all caught up on what Anne knew before she got here. And so yeah, I pooed my pants. I was three and I pooed my pants. I needed a bath when we got back from the movie. And yep, there you have it. (laughs) Does anyone else have any pooed my pants stories or pooed your pants stories? I'll share them with the world if you like. (laughs) I can't imagine why anybody wouldn't <laughs> wouldn't want to share that kind of information with the entire Twitch streaming universe. Uh, come on. I mean, you know, doesn't everybody uh, brag about how they pooed their pants when they were a little kid? <laughs> yeah, I had to. I had to get. I had to get a little bit of, of a sip of soda there. Um, and let's see here, Glenn Paul. Wow, you must have a great memory to recall that at three. I can barely remember yesterday. Well, Glenn, I'm not sure if you were here in the earlier part of the conversation, so th- there's a reason why I remember it. It's like layer upon layer upon layer of reasons. First off, my um, I it was the first movie I ever went to. I went with a different set of parents than my own parents because my mom was in the hospital giving birth to my sister. Which is why I remember the date that it happened. And so it's just this whole... And it was the first night that I ever had to spend the night away from my house without my parents. I mean, there was a whole lot of firsts going on in that particular evening. So um, it definitely left a memory. I don't think there's anything else from the age of three that I could be like, Oh yeah, on June 17th, 
I ate some beets and strained peas for dinner. I mean, you know, I definitely don't think I could even, uh, you know, do something like that. But there was, there was, there was a lot of little reasons for why it was just tattooed in my brain that that evening. Um, yeah, yeah. And e music. What you're gonna? You're not gonna share your your potty training stories with the rest of the world? I can't imagine why. I mean, is it like you have? You know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like you have a sense of dignity or something. <laughs> Rick, I'm very curious now. You've been told that you... Uh, never mind. Prel, prel. All right, then. All right. <laughs> you guys are silly. So, um... So, speaking of random, random stuff, basically, is what we're speaking of at this point. The other day... I came across, uh, um, well, and actually we're talking about Satterbox at the cinema, so this kind of goes. So the other day, I came across this news item from a news outlet in Rhode Island. And I thought that it was kind of cool um, because it's about this gentleman who used to be part of the Tuskegee Airmen. And he was a mechanic for um, for that uh air unit in the army in World War II, and he is going to be turning 100 years old, um, I believe, on May 21st, and he was hoping that folks could send him some birthday cards, and so um, I, I was going to show you the little news clip and then put up the address, so if you are interested in sending this gentleman who's going to be turning 100 years old uh, later on this month, a little birthday card, let him know, you know, where you're at. He said he's going to read them all. And, um, the Tuskegee Airmen, if you're not familiar with it, were a unit of black pilots in World War II that were extraordinarily awarded, rewarded, awarded. They were really good, man. Um, uh, but because they were black, not a whole lot of, um, history books and or, attention was given to their accomplishments until a lot later. There's a couple movies about them. One of the movies, I believe Cuba Gooding Jr. is in it. I'm not quite sure, but, um, but the movie, but, but that's the movie, whatever movie I'm thinking of that has, that might have Cuba Gooding Jr. in it. The latest movie, which came out a while ago, I'm on the verge of getting it through my library system. So, I cannot say when we will be showing Tuskegee Airmen on Satterbox at the Cinema, but I can tell you that we will be showing it. So, if you um, if you are interested in learning more, definitely uh, definitely uh, keep watching the Satterbox at the Sk Cinema movie schedule because that movie will be coming up. And um, before we go to the Tuskegee clip that I've got for you, let's talk about early childhood trauma. All right. So eMusic says, well, my mom told me I potty trained myself at nine months. Does that count? That's impressive. And I'll tell you, I, um, I was already fully potty trained by the time this horrible thing happened. So I was very shamed and embarrassed that I had let myself do it. Um, but you know, it was, I was so little, I just didn't have the control. I mean, I had the knowledge and sort of the control, but there comes a point where the pressure is just building, man. And so there you go. And Glenn Paul, my first memory was falling off my grandfather's horse. So you think they must have to be traumatic for your consciousness, consciousness to kick in perhaps totally. And honestly, Glenn Paul, like that evening was I mean, obviously, in the scheme of things, it's not traumatic, but first time seeing a movie, first time away from home, first time without parents, my sister being born, I pooed my pants. You know, there was just a lot of little traumas, you know, that really left that impression. Um, so, and Anne, right, see, you remember tumbling down the stairs early on, right? Poppy Shaney, that is right. You just came in time to talk about potty training. You have to understand. Uh, to catch you up on the story, the quick cliff notes. I was three. I saw Star Wars in the theater in Honolulu on May 11th, 1977. After the movie, I had to go to the bathroom. The adults said, no, the line is too long. Do it when we get home. When we get home. And I didn't. 
I tried, but I didn't. <laughs> and now you're caught up. So, um, <laughs> exactly. Um, and where I totally agree. Your adults in the situation didn't listen to you. You always listen. Seriously, honestly, if the kid is not in a diaper and the kid's like, I have to go to the bathroom and the kid is like three. I mean, really? You're going to say no? I just... Really? You should listen to the kid. They're they're trying to let you know. <laughs> they're trying to be potty trained for you, right? Come on. And um Yeah, and then <laughs> Rick, yep, you and Poppy Shaney are um are going yep back in circles with your grandkids now. Well, maybe I'm guessing probably your grandkids that I know of are a little bit past the potty training stage, but hard to say because so many kids take a lot longer. Like potty training is so strange. Some kids take so much longer than others. I really honestly, I'm sure there's some doctor that's like, oh, there's a normal, but I just don't really know if there is a normal on, on that time frame. It really takes a long, uh, some people a lot longer than others or some little kids a lot longer than others to get that get that action and e-music oh the adults obviously didn't have kids no they did they were my cousins uh jeremiah and jelena and um <clears throat> yeah they did yeah they did but they were not um they are not uh let's just say they were not known to be the best parents even before this incident uh but i do believe they were the only option my mom and dad had uh when they went to the hospital so um yeah but they did have kids yeah you would think wouldn't you love to give that benefit of the doubt of course they didn't listen to the kid they must not have kids because they must not know no they know no they know <laughs> And Rick, okay, they are way past that stage, four to nine now. Yeah, I knew that some of them were definitely past that stage, but I I knew or I had a feeling you still had one that was maybe, you know, because the four-year-old, some four-year-olds still don't quite have it down, um, which is a little bit late in in my ignorant non-parental parental opinion, but having known plenty of parents... I've recognized, no, actually, four is something that, yeah, some kids are still working on it at four. So, okay. All right. There you go. Um, let's see here. Uh, Darlene, there's only the youngest who's almost completely trained, just about then no diapers or pull-ups. Perfect. Perfect. And then uh, Poppy Shaney, yes, luckily Anson is now potty trained. <sighs> I, yeah, you know, I just... Yeah, I, I can totally appreciate the whole, luckily, you know, even though, even though I am almost 50 years old, I have never in my life changed a diaper, <laughs> ever, <laughs> ever in my life. And um, so I can, I can appreciate why nobody wants to change diapers. Mm -hmm. I don't want to change a diaper. I've, yeah, I've gone this far not having to, so... Let's just keep that trend going, huh? And e-music, two, two and a half is the normal potty training age. Yeah, that was always kind of my impression, but I don't know, man. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of kids who take a lot longer than to two and a half um, or three, a lot. I mean, I've known kids that have struggled up till six years old, you know, which to me is stunning. It's just like. Uh, what? You, you, your six-year-old just peed their pants in the middle of the fair? Like, but the bathroom was right there. Like, uh, yeah, anyway. Um, so, you know, every every body is different. That is for sure. And, um, and we're exactly, we've all been there, even if we don't remember it. <laughs> Which is maybe better. I, you know, I, unfortunately, um... And, um, and where you did a lot of babysitting, still love those kiddos all grown up now, but I don't need to change any more diapers. Exactly, exactly. And I think that your nieces and nephews are, um, old enough now that you, that's, that's, um, nothing you gotta worry about anymore. <laughs> so, um, all right. So, potty training is definitely one topic of scattering, but I'm gonna reel it back in. And um, 
I'm going to hopefully refocus this back to something that I wanted to show that I cannot find now. Now I can find it. Okay, cool. So, um, this is the video clip of the gentleman from Tuskegee uh, Airmen who is going to be celebrating his 100th birthday. And I thought I'd show this to you and then post the little address that we can use if you feel like dropping this gentleman a letter or a, um, a birthday card, he would be super stoked. So let's show this. For Mr. Victor Butler. Mr. Victor Butler. <laughs> Much calmer than fighting in a war. You see, Mr. Butler is believed to be the last surviving Tuskegee Airman in Rhode Island. You may remember the Tuskegee Airmen from the movie Red Tails. They were a group of black military pilots and airmen who made history while fighting in World War II. They broke barriers and led the way to desegregating the U.S. military. At first, I was going to join the Canadian Air Force with a friend of mine. But uh, after I had signed up, my mother and my father wouldn't approve of it. So I joined up with the American Air Force. Butler would become a mechanic for the Tuskegee Airmen, working on legendary planes, all while dealing with racism. Being in uh, Tuskegee, Alabama, it wasn't very acceptable to white people for black soldiers to be walking around. Today, he has awards, coins, and so much more documenting his accomplishments. But he's looking for one more thing, birthday cards. Just another day, that's all. <laughs> Mr. Butler is turning 100 next month on May 21st, and his wish is to get cards from all of you. Put this out. I imagine there's going to be a flood of birthday cards coming in. Oh, I'll read every one of them. As he waits on your cards, he'll keep putting together these puzzles and sharing his wisdom. Just enjoy life as it is. In Providence, Timmy Tobatalea, NBC 10 News. I know, Glenn. Glenn Paul, doesn't he look so good for being 99? I mean, are you kidding me? Yeah, <clears throat> he definitely looks good. So, um, hey there, Shot. Good to see you. You came in just at the last minute of me showing a video clip of uh, a news report from Rhode Island about this Tuskegee Airman who's about to turn 100. He um, He's hoping uh, to get some birthday cards. And so, um, uh, let's see here. Oh, Ezra Hill, a Tuskegee Airman, spoke to you at NASA. Well, this gentleman is named Victor Butler, so he is not the same guy that you spoke to. But um, he was a mechanic for the uh, pilots. Granted, obviously, he wasn't one of the airmen. He was just the guy who made sure the plane was safe to fly. So when I say just the, you know, <laughs> just, <laughs> trust me, that's very sarcastic possibly more important than the pilots. No offense, Poppy Shaney, but I think you know what I'm talking about, right? Gotta keep the the um, the ground crew we're looking good and working good so the air crew can, you know, come back home. And uh, yeah, so that is um, the address to mail it to. Hopefully you, guy, uh, you guys have copied that down. And if y'all haven't, just let me know and I can pop it back up on the screen if anyone wants to uh, make sure that they uh, get to sending him a birthday card. And um, yeah, and like I said, the Tuskegee Airmen. Um, oh, Rick, thank you so much. See, you're all on it. I wasn't even thinking of doing that. And that's what I should have done. So Rick has got the address in the chat. Uh, if you want to uh, scroll up and or down as needed to find it. And Oh, Shock, my hair is fabulous today. Why, thank you so much. I, I, I have to admit, it is kind of a, um, uh, it was, it is a good hair day. I did think that earlier. So I'm so glad you noticed. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, exactly, Poppy Shaney. Without the mechanic, the plane goes nowhere. So um, yeah, that works. And let's see here. You want me to check for typos there, Mr. Rick? And I'm thinking. 
your typing is looking good to go. So yeah, it looks like that um, address that is posted in the in the chat is correct. And um, yeah, there you go. And let's see here. Shock is talking about Lono, and Lono's music is the music that you should be hearing in the background right now. And if you want to check out a brand new performance that Lono has recently uploaded, you can check out his YouTube channel. Uh, his YouTube username is Kaupe'epe, but it's always easiest, if you don't know how to spell that, to just do a YouTube search for Lono Music and you will find his channel right there. Today, uh, today he uploaded a new song. Well, it's not a new song. It's a new performance of a very old song. And um, it looks like both and where and shock um, have posted the um, the links to the the site and I believe and probably actually um, post the actual uh, video that he posted today for unusual love and as usual his background stories for the songs has been posted um, on that page so you can get the uh, you know, sort of get the motivation, understand uh, how that song got written, or uh, perhaps in this case as well, um, what motivated him to post that song on YouTube now. And so, uh, yeah, Lono Music, <clears throat> phenomenal Hawaiian guitar player, but also good at so many different styles of music. He does some, you know, sort of light jazz. He does, you know, classic type, you know, electric guitar rock, et cetera, et cetera. Definitely, um, sometimes he's actually dabbled even in some hip hop and rap. So, uh, you know, across the genres and styles, chances are there is a Lono uh, song that you will find palatable to your ears. And uh, another handy, th so check him out at lonomusic.com. That's where you can buy all of his albums. But also, one feature I love about his website is the chords and lyrics section, where you can learn the chords and lyrics to the songs posted, but also on the uh, <clears throat> pages where it is a Hawaiian song, he has the English translations, and then also, sometimes in the liner notes, footnotes of the song page, he will have additional information about the background of the song and or where you can learn more information about the background of that song. So um, not only is he a great uh, musician to just listen to, if you want to learn about Hawaiian history, especially Molokai history, that is where Lono Music is located. Um, if you want to learn about Molokai and Hawaii, <clears throat> he is a great resource to leap your knowledge journey off of. He's got some great starting points that you can learn from, which then will probably make you go, yeah, but what about? And then you can carry on your little down your rabbit hole in the path you choose. And so, um, <clears throat> oh, shock, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay, shock. You and Anne both today have come in just a little bit late Manage to say something and get the topic, uh, you know, a little bit off track. And both of you, oh, I'm so sorry. Remember, you guys, this is the whole point of a chat show. Chatter is to scatter. And we need those random topics to scatter, too. So, um, so absolutely, I do not apologize for changing the subject, especially if the subject is Lono. Come on, you know I could always talk about Lono. Um, so, let's see here. Um... Uh, <laughs> so looks like Poppy Shaney is going to be in Sacramento next week. I wonder if Cindy Krause is going to be able to catch dinner with them. That'll work. And, um, let's see here. Thank you, Rick, so much for posting the link to lonomusic.com because, uh, that is the website where you can purchase his, his things and get all of that information. Like I was saying, and, um, <laughs> yeah, and, and Darlene is exactly it. This is the Scatter Chatter Crew area, precisely. And, um, <laughs> and where <laughs> coordinated scatter go. That's exactly it. That's what I want from you guys is the scattering of the topics. Because, um, hey, you know, not everybody, I, I don't know everything about everything. In fact, the more you guys listen to me talk, the more I hope you know. I don't know nothing about much of nothing. So um, <laughs> we always got to have this chatter scatter. Uh, yeah, so 
Um, let's see here. Let's see what else is on the um, on the agenda for today. Okay, so I showed you. Oops, I need to go up there. All right, so now, <laughs> now we're gonna completely change the topic. Um, back to something that we discussed a little bit on May 1st, which is Lay Day in Hawaii. I didn't really get to um, go as in-depth. Well, I'm not really in-depth. I meant to do more research on the topic before the stream last Sunday, but the stream starts at 5, and 5, like, showed up. 5 showed up right on time. And so I, I ran out of time to study, and um, <laughs> yeah, so I didn't get a chance to do all all the things with Lay Day, and um, and so I wanted to talk about what we were talking about on Sunday because I was showing here I was showing this set of pictures and for the most part these a lot of these pictures are um, are of the each the individual flowers that are associated with the individual islands however the red flower that's associated with Hawaii the island of the of Hawaii otherwise known as the big island which by the way some folks are leaning towards not using the phrase the big island but using the phrase Hawaii Island instead um, and so uh, the Hawaii Island flower I said was the red lehui blossom and apparently that is sort of true-ish that is true in regards to making the lays but e-music pointed out that actually the anthurium is the red anthurium is the uh, Big Islands flower, and that flower is oftentimes not used for lays, mostly because here let's find it now, mostly because it looks like this, and I don't think I've ever seen <laughs> a lay with those flowers. I definitely know of those flowers. Those flowers are very very familiar to me, but I can honestly say I've never seen a lay with those flowers in it. And so I can see why an alternate flower, I don't, don't even know how you would put that flower in a lay, frankly. So I can totally see um, why perhaps um, there's an alternate flower f that's used when creating the lays for, for a Hawaii island. So, um, so yeah, exactly, Shock. I don't think that flower would <clears throat> stand up well in a lay. I, exactly. I'm picking up what you're laying down. I absolutely, uh, I absolutely agree. So, um, so that is some more information about the flowers of Hawaii. And we'll get back to that topic in just a sec. But right now, um, right now, let's go back to what Glenn Paul was talking about, I believe. And, um, that's right. Okay, so Glenn Paul is asking, does anybody enjoy stargazing? I'm awake all night lately. I feel like it's all I ever do. It makes me feel so small, but you still like it. Yeah, you know, it really is. And you must be in a very um, rural area of Spain, I'm guessing, Glenn, uh, for you to have such a feeling of insignificance within the stars, you know? Because uh, here in the Seattle area, it's so much light pollution. Just like um, Sh Shock is just saying where, you know, wow, you've got dark skies where you're at. We get too much, you know, light pollution here, totally. Um, uh, yeah, and so um, that must be kind of neat because I know that when, um, when I am like in mountain country in the middle of like nowhere, uh, the amount of stars is something that... <sighs> yeah, it does make you feel insignificant. And um and I think Rick is a fellow fan of stargazing. Rick is generally the one on this chat who's going to be telling us about the eclipses, the meteor showers, the this is the that's is and the other things, the northern lights, the whole thing. And so um 
And so uh, uh, Rick is definitely a fellow stargazer. And let's see, um, Rick uh, has a wife named Darlene. And Darlene is saying, Glen Paul, up north in Wisconsin, we have a basic cabin on a lake in the woods, a nice relaxing place. And there you see the best night skies, sometimes around an evening fire. Oh, Darlene. I want to go to North Wisconsin with you guys. <laughs> and oh, okay, so e-music. That lay or that they use the they use hold on. They use this flower in lays around the horses. I mean around the neck of the horses. All right. See, we are learning something new um every day from e-music. And speaking of learning something new every day from e-music, I'm gonna show you this as well. E-music provided this picture for me. Now, I was always under the impression that lays needed to be um, flowers or plants, something of the, some sort of something, you know, something, um, something living. Um, but, but then, you know, you have the neat house shells that create lays. And my framework of what I thought a lay must be was very limited. What I mean by that is, this frilly bit around the collar of uh, the collar and the shoulders and the chest area of this um, older tutu lady, she that is called a lay. So lay is actually um, e music was telling me, and e music by all means chime in with any and all corrections or extra information um, because I am not <laughs> really in a position to be educating people about this. I am truly. <laughs> Just letting the tiny bits of info that have been given to me, letting them out for the rest of the world to hear as well. I do not have a lot of, well, like I just said, I was not under, I didn't know that that, um, that little frilly bit around the, the dress around the mu'umu'u would be considered a lay. But here it is. It is, um, it is considered a lay. And e-music was even telling me that, um, that church ladies oftentimes knit little um, lay necklaces with, you know, yarn. They knit flowers and create the little um, reusable lays, as it were. And so I had um, no idea. Now, e-music is coming in here. Let's go back. Hold on. Okay, yeah. And e-music is coming in. Lay are also made using human hair. That's interesting. I literally just read that. And also on um, e-music, you, were you, you, when we watched um, uh, Kuliana Maui a few weeks ago on Satterbox at the Cinema, you were here, were you not? I think you were. Um, yeah, so the, the, the whalebone um, necklace lay, I guess, that the um, girl was wearing, that the boy had given her as a gift... Um, it was made with human hair and a, a whale tooth. And yeah, um, from what I read yesterday, from what I read earlier today, um, the lay uh, that was made with human hair and a whale tooth or whale bone, that was only allowed to be worn by the elite, right? The royalty, the common people could not wear that type of lay. That it was reserved for the the high up mucky muck people in charge. That's what I read today. E music, I'm hoping you can come in and say, hey, you're totally wrong. Or, oh yeah, you read that right. So, um, <laughs> so let me know if my, uh, if what I read about the human hair, whale bone lay only being allowed for the important folks is true or not. And yes, e-music, you were there and you did notice the lay. I thought you were there. I was 99% sure you were there, but so hard to remember. Like Glenn Paul said earlier, I can't even remember yesterday, let alone when I was three. So yeah, a couple weeks ago at the Satterbox at the cinema. No, definitely did not uh, remember that. Okay, so it looks like e-music is coming in with some other, some more details, which is the warriors could wear the human hair and whale bone lay as well. That kind of makes sense. I mean, honestly, now I this is this is me talking about stuff I don't know anything about. But doesn't it make sense that a warrior would be wearing a necklace with human hair? I mean, doesn't that seem intimidating and just like 
yeah, this was the power of my enemies and I've got the human hair and the whatever. I just, to me, it seems pretty logical. Like, yeah, that seems really kind of badass and scary. So yeah, of course a warrior would wear that. Um, but like I said, I, what I what I just said right there, assuming, could be so completely disrespectful to to the uh, foundation of the reasoning, the real reasoning behind that uh, <laughs> that um, that rule of allowance of who can wear that stuff. <clears throat> but um, but yeah, so let's see here. So that was basically. Oh, I had one more thing that I wanted to talk about in regards to, um, right, yeah, the hair equals mana, it, precisely. And so it seems like, to you know, if you've taken this person's life and then you can collect their mana and then put it around your own neck, isn't that something a warrior would want to do? I mean, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, um... Yeah, exactly. Poppy Shaney, a little psychological warfare by the warriors makes sense to me. Yeah. And so, like I said, so see, we're, we're having a little bit of a learning moment here because like I said, what I read was it was only the royalty, the Ali'i that were allowed to wear that. But <laughs> here we are learning. Well, there's an if and or but to that. And it, it totally makes it like, yeah, that actually makes total sense. The warriors would would want to be in on wearing that if they could. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so, um, so let's see here. Oh yeah. So, um, I think this might be, uh, um, well, okay. So, Anne, um, <laughs> um, E music. That's why in the movie, the girl got bolder. Okay. Okay. Right, right, right. All right. See, now you're picking up on layers of that movie that I hadn't really picked up on, but I do want to watch that movie again because I know there are a quadrillion layers of things that I missed and probably will never catch until I learn something and then go, Oh, that's what, but yeah, I want to, I, I have no doubt that, um, that you caught on to so many layers in that movie that just went over my head. But, but E-Music, Anne does um, bring up a good question. So is it always the hair from like the enemies or is it from loved ones and elders that have passed on and then you're maintaining and carrying on your lineage Power and and mana, mana, mana. I don't actually remember. Is it mana? Yeah, mana. Um. So I guess, so I guess, the question that I'm asking or interpreting for man is: Is it always the enemies, or, or are different hairs sometimes used too? For a very different reason, I guess. Um. And if you don't know, you don't know, because why, you, I, I'm sorry that I'm putting all of these questions onto you as though you are the spokesperson for all that is Hawaiian cultural. But um, but basically, uh, you're the most knowledgeable in the Chatterbox crew at the moment. So uh, we are looking for your guidance. And it looks like um, it looks like they collect higher mana from anyone given per anyone any one given person or higher warrior they killed okay okay all right okay all right then so it sounds like it's really more of a just a, a warrior thing <laughs> all right all right so um so now this particular lay that we're talking about right here is a very specific one with the whale bones and the uh human hair traditionally as i'm sure you guys know Flowers are what people traditionally associate with, um, with, um, <sighs> with the concept of lays. Although we've discussed other things can be used like kukui nut, like shells, like human hair and bone. But, um, <laughs> but basically flowery is kind of the, um, the, the, the image here. And, um, there was in 1927 when lay day was first proposed, um, it was proposed actually by a journalist who worked for the Hawaii Star Bulletin. Um, I guess, let's see, his name was Don Blading. And um, a co-worker of his 
decided that May Day would be the day that the Hawaiians would celebrate their heritage and um, and their cultivation of the tropical flowers and the tradition that is lay making and giving me, and um, and so uh, this particular uh, it, it's a phrase known as uh, let's see here May Day is Lay Day in Hawaii Nay, and that phrase ended up getting written into a poem by Ruth and Leonard Hawk, which then was created into a song, which has been sung, I guess, traditionally. Um, oh, Don Blanding. Okay, thank you, eMusic. I couldn't read my own handwriting. Don Blanding. See, she knows what I'm talking about. And so um, there is a song that is associated with the day, and I found it on YouTube, and I am going to share with you um, the song of of Lay Day in Hawaii Nay. There we go. Excellent. So that was the traditional Lay Day song that gets performed uh, usually, I guess, on May 1st. And um, eMusic, there are beautiful coffee table books with Lay. They're old enough to find at used bookstores online. Awesome. That would be neat. You know, and one thing I did find out and I forgot to mention, um, apparently... And eMusic, this is going to be something that I expect you to point and laugh. Like, everybody, everybody get the ha-ha emotes ready. Um, here, actually, let me throw the first one. Just let me just throw the first one. Here we go. Um, we got to do it. Just, you know, this is, this is ha-ha. So, um, apparently, on Lay Day, there is a lay competition for the lay of the year. And there's this, you know, every not everybody, but... People compete with their lay making skills to make a very beautiful lay and then they all go on display and people line up to look at them and then, you know, it's sort of like a state fair competition, you know, with the bet who's got the best apple pie, only this is 
the only competition is who makes the best lay. And um, so on lay day, if you ever want, if you ever, if you ever happen to be around on lay day and you happen to stumble upon the lay day celebration, it seems like something that you might want to go check out just so, to experience the incredible works of art that is a lay and that goes into creating that flower, um, flowered and ferned and seeded necklace. Um, and so, uh, you know, I, I, it, it kind of makes sense that there would be a lay making competition on May Day, but it never occurred to me that that would be the case. I just thought, I don't know. It just never occurred to me that there was a competition, um, but there is. And apparently somebody won it just a few days ago for the lay of the year. And I didn't have a picture of it. I couldn't find it. Um, and yes, exactly. Competition at Kapiolani Park. And it's very tough competition. Yeah, I saw some of the entries and um, yeah, yeah. Um, I can honestly say I don't, well, obviously I would not want to be a judge because I wouldn't even know what I'm judging, but I can definitely tell that there's a lot to know of when judging the intri intricacies of the intricate flowers that are created into the necklace. There's a lot of skills going into that. A lot of different subtleties to be judged. Something I know nothing which. Okay, so emus, there's different categories even. See? Learning something new every day. Different categories. That never, never occurred to me. Well, obviously it didn't occur to me. It didn't even occur to me there'd be a flipping competition. Um, so, okay. E-music, I guess I should have done some homework. But, uh, off the top of your head, can you remember what some of the competitions or no some of the categories are like are there ones well do you remember what some of the categories are i'll just leave it at that and if you don't that's cool we'll we'll survive we'll survive <clears throat> that's right we will and um let's see here where else um okay look back on hawaii tv station news and you'll see the lay Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, I saw, um, I, I read a description. I guess it was like, it was ferns or something, the one that won this year. It had a lot of ferns in it. And I guess it was blue or something. I don't, I, basically I ran out of time, so I couldn't go searching for search and search and stuff. Um, and so, uh, so yeah, I actually might, um, okay, so there's the seed lays versus the flowers. Okay, I was thinking that. I was like, is there like a kukui nut version versus a flower version? Okay, right, right. And the, yeah, okay, the seeds, that makes sense. That makes sense. And um, I guess my next question would be, do they have a, a shell lay competition or are they excluded from competition um, with the Niihau shells? Because the Niihau shells, they, um, blue might be jade. Okay, okay. Um, the Niihau shells, I've got a picture of them. Where did they go? There they are. So these are a picture of Niihau shells. And as eMusic has pointed out several times, these are the only shells in the world that can be um, insured because that's how valuable they are. They are actually, um, I dare say, more valuable than pearls. Um, pearls, after all, can be cultivated. These shells are wild harvested and not to be culti not cultivated, um, from my understanding, at least. And from what it looks like, a strand of, or not a, not a singular strand, but a, um, a lay of these shells that are like multiple strand lays that are maybe about as big as what I'm wearing on my neck probably runs about two grand. So yeah, you know, two grand for a necklace of shells. That's it doesn't go down to your belly button. It no, it doesn't go down to your belly button. It doesn't go down to your chest. It, it's really sort of, you know, just like the neck, the neck length. 
and um, it's a couple thousand bucks. It's so it's if it's not one that you just give to some random stranger off the plane, as it were. You better know that person. Um, but they are beautiful shells, and I want to thank eMusic for sending me a copy of the or this picture uh, um, of all of those beautiful shells, and um, and so yeah. Uh, Okay, so Rick did a quick Google search, and apparently the Hilo Lay competition webpage is in that link, but it and um, it's not up to date, he says, but it shows plenty of their judging criteria and categories. So um, awesome, Rick. I'm obviously not gonna go down that rabbit hole right now. Um, I'm doing something else, but <laughs> after I'm done doing stuff, I will totally be going down that rabbit hole. And um, even though I had only intended on revisiting Lay Day once, i.e. today, um, yeah, we might revisit it twice. And um, so eMusic is coming in with, uh, oh no, 2K, more like 10K or more. And I don't doubt that, actually. I was just going off of this one necklace that I saw like on Pinterest or something or on eBay or something, not a bona fide seller, not like I don't, not a whole lot of research was gone into what that little quick search. So my numbers were coming from a pretty ignorant point of view. So, okay. So eMusic is saying, I heard the price on Sunday, but already forgot $10,000 or more. So if anyone ever gives you a Niihau shell lay, just know that either they love you very much or they have a lot of money to spare <laughs> or both, <laughs> but feel very honored nonetheless, because that is an incredible piece of cultural art. Um, and uh, yeah, so, um, okay, e-music. Yeah. So the one stranders are less. It's the multi stranders that get up to be 10K. Still, though, I mean, 2K, 10K, honestly, it might as they're both equal in my book. Like, I can't, couldn't imagine spending any of that amount on a necklace, you know, no, no, no matter um, no matter how uh, gorgeous or tempting. I just, you know, that's just not in my bill. My billfold don't, don't, doesn't open that wide. <laughs> exactly, Darlene. Wow. That's all I can say. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I once again... I am not trying to downplay, like, the situation, but these are just shells, right? I mean, they're not, like, they don't have cocaine in them, do they? You know, I mean, <laughs> you know, these are gorgeous, tiny little shells, but holy flirking snit, dude. 10K? That's, that's some crazy talk right there. And, um, Cindy Krause, your dad always greeted you with a lay from every stand. So wait, when you went to the competition, when you went to the Lay Day festivals, he would buy one lay for you from every stand that was there. How many lays did you end up um, with on your body by the time you were done? Were you able to look over? Was it like graduation time where you can barely see over the top of the flowers? And um, and let's see here, eMusic, you used to be friends with the Niihau Master Laymaker, so much talent. Oh, I can't even imagine the the vague search that I did to look at the Niihau shell lays, I mean, it is, it's not just a strand of pearls. You know, I mean, these are intricate weaving patterns where the shells are laying certain directions, doing, creating certain patterns. I, I literally can't comprehend how it gets, how they even get made. So... <laughs> You used to be friend so much talent. I don't think that so much talent even comes half. I don't even think that covers it. I mean, I just it's it's so much magic in the fingers is I think um, is what I think it is. And it's the craftsmanship that makes it expensive. That doesn't surprise me. They're so tiny and it takes so many and you have to know what you're doing so much to make them do the thing on the string, do the thing on the string. Um, yeah, that's not even surprising to me that that is probably the root behind the money. And Anne, you need to find that one you were looking for the other night. Yeah, so Anne thinks she might have a strand of the Niihau shells. 
but she also thinks she might have put it someplace safe. Someplace safe. Yeah. Don't you love it when you do that? It's very safe. Safe from even me. <laughs> I think that's where she put them. Somewhere safe. <laughs> so, um... And then, yeah, e-music. The shells are very delicate, easily cracked when making holes in them to string. That's what I was thinking, too. When I was looking at how tiny they were, I was like, well, how on earth do you even drill... First off, how on earth is this shell even big enough to have a hole drilled in it? How tiny must the hole be? How do you drill such a tiny hole? These are all things that came through my mind. And yeah, Rick, um, and then someone has to go collect all the tiny shells. I cannot remember if this is something that eMusic told me. I cannot remember if this is something I read. And if I did read it, I cannot remember where... I read it, but what I can tell you is I heard somewhere on the internets, maybe, that in order to fill a film canister, you know, a 35 millimeter film canister can container, to fill that up with Niihau shells generally takes four to five hours of searching the sand to find them. Four to five hours just to fill one film container canister now i know that if there's some young folks here they're just like film canister what the flying fork are you talking about look it up honey um everybody here who's older than the age of 35 knows what a film canister is and probably use the film canister for things other than film we're not going to get into that though but either way what i heard and or read was um you know the 35 millimeter film canister Four to five hours is what it takes for um, someone to hunt, harvest, collect all of the Niihau, the Niihau shells enough to fill that. So, um, yeah, just like Rick said, and someone has to collect all the tiny shells. Exactly, exactly. So um, let's see here. Um, Cindy Krause, oh, someplace safe, still looking for my pencil iPad. Nice, right, exactly, someplace safe. We all have it, we all know there. And, um, um, and Darlene, yeah, they're apparently they are that rare and so small. Um, now, if eMusic has like, <laughs> I cannot emphasize this enough. Anytime eMusic wants to come in and say, no, that is not right. You got that wrong. Let me clear this up. E-music. <laughs> Come on down. <laughs> Come on down. But that is um, actually what, I, uh, what I've heard. So there you go. And Rick says that um, you um, have spent many days walking up and down Sunset Beach looking for one sunrise shell for Darlene. You never did find one. What's a sunrise shell? I've never heard that term. I'm very curious. I'm guessing it sounds pretty, or it looks pretty. Um, and yeah, I'm just very curious what a sunrise shell is. So if anybody knows, I'm assuming Rick probably knows because he was looking for one. But if anybody else knows, <laughs> throw down what the what's a sunrise shell? I've never... I mean, maybe I've heard of it. I don't think I've heard of it. Um... Sunrise shell necklace? Um, yeah, it's still not... I mean, I know what a puka shell necklace is. And when I was a little kid, oh man, all the cool kids were wearing puka shell necklaces. I wanted to wear a puka shell necklace so bad. I made my mom buy me a puka shell necklace so I could wear it. Dude, I could not wear a puka shell necklace to save my life. The puka shells pull all of your tiny little neck hairs out and it hurts. It hurts to wear them. I mean, I guess that if you wear a puka shell necklace long enough that it like pulls out all the hairs and you don't have your bald there and so it doesn't hurt anymore. But as like a three-year-old, four-year-old, the pain was just too much to, too much to bear. And I could not, you know, so after just begging and whining and, you know, screaming probably that I wanted a puka shell necklace, it was on my 
neck for probably 30 minutes and I had to take it off and was like, I don't want to wear this anymore. And my mom was pissed. <laughs> um... So let's see here. Because of the Pukulani shell craze, all shells are getting rare to find in Hawaii. Yeah, well, there you go. There you go. Um, so, uh, okay, so Puka shell is, all right, and thought Puka, I, I thought Pukulani might be a longer version of Puka, Puka shell, which doesn't make sense now that I think about it, but we're not going to get into that. Thank you for clarifying. <laughs> so, um, all right, so. I've got one more little thing to talk about this uh, chatter with scatter. No, chatter with statter. That's who it is uh, today. And it's kind of exciting news. And I thought I would share it with you guys because it's a topic that we have talked about on more than one occasion. Yes, that is right. We're going to talk about whales. We're going to talk about Biggs transients. We're going to talk about the orcas in my area because... Now, I want to talk about this when it happened, but I was in the middle of tax season, so it just didn't happen. But on April 1st, um, hold on, got to find it now. So on April 1st uh, this year, so April Fool's Day, 2022, there was a record amount of whale sightings in the Salish Sea. The Salish Sea is the inland waters between Vancouver Island, the Puget Sound, etc. Along the North American coast between British Columbia and the state of Washington and, um, and up through to Alaska. And so um, the orcas, these are the transient orcas, Darlene, not what, um, what we refer to as the residents. Now, the resident orcas that um, the southern resident orcas that hang around in the Puget Sound area. They haven't been seen for a couple months now. They're off doing other things. Um, but the transients, the bigs transients, they are um, <clears throat> they are hanging out. And on April 1st, 10 different pods, over 70 whales were witnessed that day, which is literally a record for um, for a one day sighting within the Salish Sea. These numbers were uh, tallied and accumulated by the Whale Watch Center. And um, it turns out these were done, you know, a verifiable organizations, whale watching tours, marine biologists, etc. All have um, were taking part in these luck of the draw sightings reporting them in and so the whale uh, watch center the whale research center they calculated and like holy crumb they said 72 different sightings of the transients now you'll see i've got this map up here and we've got some stars and we've got some sunshines so the hey see honda yeah you did you came in just in time for the whale talk so the star at the very, very top, that's Campbell River off of the inner um, passage of Vancouver Island. And that's the northernmost area that the that some of these pods were found. And then another um, another set of pods was found. Uh, the furthest south was down in the Hood Canal. And so that's the little star that's the furthest, furthest, furthest south Um where these whales were spotted. So this little arc of stars and suns that you're seeing is basically where these 10 different pods culminating with 72 different whales were sighted. And we've got some pictures here. In fact, um, the one, so we've got the bottom, bottom, bottom star. If you go like directly above that star, um, to see the other star that's floating in the middle of the water. I have a picture of the whales that were found there. And let's do this. Okay, so these two guys, these two guys are brothers. They're T101A and B. They're Rush and Lagoon. Now this guy, we don't, I, we don't have an ID on what this guy was. So I don't know. He's just hunting. Um, we don't know who this guy is, but that guy, that guy's name is Chainsaw. And can you, can you figure out why they named him Chainsaw? That's right. Cause of the little things on his thing. And then this, um, singular whale here 
He is oh crumb. Oh, his name was Jack. So he is T one thirty seven A. So these two are brothers. They're um, huge, apparently. And um, like I said, Rush and Lagoon. This one is unknown. And then, um, and then uh, this next one. That's Chainsaw. He's my favorite. And he was spotted. He was spotted. Um, where that little star is that's floating in the middle of the blue, that's where Chainsaw was spotted. Now, middle of the island is the little sunshiny, little sunshiny emblem, not the star, the sunshine. And that little sunshiny area, a couple weeks later on like April 15th, they got some incredible, um, some incredible awesomeness. And I'm going to share with you the video of this pod. And this pod um, is uh, is a, a whale named Noah. And then Noah was with his aunt and with his three cousins in this particular video. Because you see, they actually name all of these, um, all of these, you know... Oh no, please don't tell me it's not gonna work. <gasps> oh no, it's not working. Okay, well, all right. I'm a liar, I'm not gonna show you. I'm not gonna show you the video. But the video was of these five orcas and they were swimming through, um, through a marina. I mean, like, people were close and they were, honestly, the video, and I'm really pissed that this video is not working i don't oh wait hold on maybe i do okay wait all right maybe um shoot so let's see if i can so shock is saying hey just send us the link and i am all right so okay that is i'm not going to show it to you because i can't apparently but that is the web page um, that is the web page that this video that I'm talking about is on. And so um, that link for the Vancouver Island CTVnews.ca forward slash video, etc. That is the link that hopefully when you go there, it will get you to the video that I'm talking about. But um, but basically, though, these whales are in the marina and it's so very close to boats i honestly thought that they were going to overturn some of the boats but being as close to the boats as they were and then them being on the surface it was a really nice size frame of reference you know and just like how large they really are and um Boy, howdy, they are big. Yes, they are. And so if you go and click that link, remember, um, we're looking at T049A1. His name's Noah. We're looking at T049B. That's Noah's aunt. They didn't tell me what Noah's aunt's name was. And then we've got T049B2, B3, and B4. And those are all of Noah's aunt's kids, i.e. Noah's cousin. Noah's cousins. So, as you can tell, whales hang with their ohana. And uh, we know this because they've been able to identify all these different, you know, groups and lineages, etc., etc. And so the tea pods are extraordinarily healthy right now. It, like I said, 72 sightings in one day is kind of a record breaker, or as far as the Whale Research Center is concerned, is a record breaker. And um, unfortunately, the southern residents of the um, of the area, that's what I consider the the local pods, which which actually is a misnomer. We won't get into that, though. Um, but what I call the re the resident, the residents and the locals, those pods are uh, J pod, K pod and L pod. And unfortunately, between the three pods, there's only 73 members left. So the southern residents right now are definitely um, in a bit of a holding pattern to a slight decline. 
whereas the transient whales are absolutely on an ups upswing. And what separates these two different um, seemingly identical species, but are not, is the southern residents feast solely on the salmon. And so the salmon runs are what keep the northern, the southern residents uh, fed. I believe it's also the northern residents that eat the salmon as well. Northern residents are whales that are found only in Canada and Alaskan waters. Southern residents are the ones that are found in the Washington and Vancouver and British Columbia type waters. So um, the southern residents, unfortunately, are not in the best of shape. But the transients, they feed on marine mammals, sea lions, seals, etc. And the penguins, uh, seabirds, they, um, they are doing extraordinarily well. So um, what this means for the Puget Sound Salish Sea ecosystem remains to be seen. But, um, but that is the current status of the orcas as we know it right now. And since we have spoken of the Biggs transients and Southern residents on more than one occasion on the stream, I thought I would just let you guys know where the status is at the time being. And it looks like Elaine has slid on in right at the end of the stream. Gosh, Elaine, I'm super stoked to hear you or to see you here. We talked about Hawaii, uh, Hawaii's Lay Day again. We're talking about some orcas. We were talking about uh, Niihau shells. We're talking about all sorts of things, but um, catch it on the replay if you can. I will be, um, be posting it uh, tomorrow on YouTube, but it will be up on Twitch for the next two weeks. I would recommend watching the rebroadcast on Twitch because Twitch has the chat as it happens. When I upload these streams to YouTube, the chat does not come with it. The, this, wait, this chat box, this chat box comes with it. But the actual like live chat that I am responding to that's easier to read than, than, I can't point. It's hard to point this box. This box is hard to read. And so, um, so yeah. Um, so yeah, the, um, the, uh, Twitch stream has the easier to read chat replay. The YouTube stream does not have any, um, does not bring in the chat anymore, which is frustrating, but YouTube has the power and I do not. So, um, definitely check it out on the replay and I guess we're going to be wrapping things up. So I'd like to remind all you all to come hang out Statterbox at the cinema on Saturday. We'll be watching Get Low. And then on Sunday, who knows what we'll be talking about, but my best guess is we'll probably talk about Lay Day in Hawaii again because there's it sounds like even more to uh, that we didn't talk about today. So thank you guys for hanging out. I hope you guys had a great time chattering and scattering the statters and the whole, all of the topics. And I hope to see you guys next Sunday for the next chat show. But I hope we um, see each other before that on um, on Saturday. And before I leave, I'm going to pop that back up on the screen. For those who weren't here at the beginning or near the beginning, there is a gentleman who's turning 100 years old named Victor Butler. He used to be part of the Tuskegee Airmen. He was one of the mechanics on the airplane. He wasn't an actual pilot. But as Poppy Shaney will point out, that doesn't matter. Mechanics need to be there because pilots can't do nothing without the mechanic. So, Victor Butler, turning 100 May 21st, hoping to get a birthday card from anybody and everybody. And so if you want to send that gentleman the birthday card, that is the address that you can mail it to. And, shock, did we talk about food? I don't think we did. I don't think we did. So, on that note, I guess I'm going to have to say, let's go get some Spam Musubi, and we'll come out, we'll come out uh, and eat in the Spam Musubi on Sunday. There we go. Uh, Rick, um, what day is his 100th? It's May 21st. Let me check my calendar. Looks like the 21st is a Saturday. So May 21st, Saturday, May 21st is his 100th birthday. So 
I want to thank everyone for hanging out. I want to thank Lono for posting his new video today and for sharing his music with us. I want to thank Shock for posting the links to Lono's um, Lono's video. I want to thank Ann Ware for posting the links to Lono's YouTube or Vicky Versa or both. I want to thank um, E Music for coming in with all of the knowledge and um, uh, and and then I want to. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Elaine is coming in, saving the day. We've got a food topic. That's right. We're going long so we can talk about the food. E.T. Aloha says, Ted's Pies of the North Shore, Ted's Bakery, he makes some great pies, is going to discontinue pies in retail stores due to a starch shortage. And I have to tell you, Elaine, I heard that on Photo Luke earlier today, and I was really bummed because I wanted... I was taking for granted that I wouldn't have to go to the North Shore to try one of his chocolate halpia pies. And now I have to go to the North Shore to go get the pies. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not like opposed to going to the North Shore. I just was hoping I could grab a slice at maybe a 7-Eleven or something before I, at, at will, just, you know, in the middle of the night, I want a pie, a piece of pie. I will go get it now. Whereas now I don't think I'll be able to do that. So there you have it, you guys. For those who don't know, Ted's Bakery on Oahu, North Shore Institution, used to have pies in pretty much all the grocery stores. And now, not so much. Supply chain issues have nipped that in the bud. Hopefully by the time I get to Oahu in the middle of June, that'll be fixed. But yeah, I'm going to count on it not. Oh yeah, I know, Elaine. I can I can drive to the North Shore. I know, I know. But gall dung it, what if I wanted a piece of pie in the middle of the night? I'd rather just go to 7-Eleven. But, you know, first world problems, right? <laughs> Rick, you can't get just one slice because it's that good. You need the whole thing. That's the problem, my friend. That's exactly why I want to just get one slice at a time. Because, quite literally... I'm not tiny. I could eat the pie. <laughs> Nobody needs to eat a whole pie. Even if you feel like you need to, you really don't need to. So, you know, that's why I wanted just to get them singular slice at a time. To, to, to ration, ration it. I mean, I'm pretty sure five minutes after I finished the slice, I'd go back to the 7-Eleven and buy another slice. But shush, we're not going to talk about that. So, <laughs> so we have fulfilled the obligation to talk about food on Chatter with Statter for at least a minute, thanks to Elaine. That was a good, that was a good save there, Shock, coming in. What about food? Did we talk about food? And Elaine's like, we got this. I can, I can throw this pie pan frisbee your direction. We got this. And um, Andre, good to see you coming in. I assume that you have gotten home from work now. Throwing down the 500 biddies, so sweet of you. It is, as I'm sure you know, time for us to wrap this up. We did go long because I had to talk about food. Had to talk about food. Um, and uh, there we have it. But uh, today's topics were lots of different things, so catch it on the restream. Like I said earlier, restream on Twitch has the chat. It's easier to read. And tomorrow I will be getting this up onto YouTube for those who would rather just watch it on YouTube. Anyway, and that is it for today. I hope to see you soon and uh, have yourselves a good rest of the evening. Thank you so much for stopping by. <laughs>